one day old. Scientists have named him Petty Point, the little one, and he is at the beginning of a great adventure. This story shows what his future may hold. It begins in a world of sound. Created by older, larger males. It's possible that humpbacks have been singing their extraordinary complex songs for millions of years. This is one thing every newborn humpback is aware of. It is not alone. Petit Point was born in the crystal clear waters of French Polynesia. Every year in July, humpbacks return to the tiny island of Rurutu to wait out the winter, to mate and to give birth. This is a great gathering of whales from the South Pacific and Southern Oceans. After many weeks of traveling from her feeding grounds in Antarctica, 4,000 miles away, and then giving birth, Petty Point's mother is ready to rest. Her name is Virgul. She carried her baby an entire year before he was born. Here, she's found a calm, safe spot. While she sleeps, her baby can play. Now, several weeks older, Pity Point has grown into his humpback colors and is eager to explore his underwater nursery. White sand is the perfect stage for a little whale's ballet. Here he can begin to discover the world around him, including his own shadow on the sand. Mother and calf will stay together for one year, and then this little whale will set out on his own. As 
As mammals, humpback whales need to breathe air. And after 30 minutes resting on the seabed, Vogul is ready to surface. Next to his mother, Petty Point is still tiny, but already he's 15 feet long and weighs 2,000 kilos. He needs to grow fast. In November, in four months' time, Petty Point will embark on a great voyage to accompany his mother to the Antarctic feeding grounds. There is another world to discover, at the surface, where water meets air. Petty Point is still learning how to maneuver with his huge flippers, which seem more like giant wings. For now, they're good for play, but they'll become crucial when he grows up and chases fish. He lives in a three-dimensional world. Like all babies, Petty Point tires himself out after so much playing. It's time to return to mother. He needs to sleep, but he has a problem. His young body is so buoyant, it'll float to the surface when he rests. Snuggling under his mother is the perfect solution. She can keep her body stationary in mid-water. Adult humpback whales have extraordinary buoyancy control. This huge animal can remain completely still in the water. The best location to rest is on or near the seabed. The sun is too hot at the surface. Vergul has good reason to be so inactive. There's little food for humpbacks in the tropics. By conserving energy, she can extend her stay in this nursery, allowing her calf time to grow and develop before his long southward migration. At this early stage, Vogul is the focus of Petty Point's attention. Their bond is strong. From her, Petty Point will learn the essential skills of being a humpback.
Betty Point will also learn from other humpbacks, adult males, who will pass on something very special to him, their song. When he matures, Petty Point will become a great singer, like all male humpbacks. Their songs are the longest and most complex of any animal. Humpbacks sing day and night. The singer is often motionless, head down, about 50 feet below the surface. It starts with a note. A series of notes becomes a phrase. The phrase is repeated as a theme. Several themes together become a song. A song can last 30 minutes. And when it's over, the whale returns to the beginning and starts all over again. The male humpback may sing for hours or even days. He has a phenomenal memory for sound. The song travels far underwater, especially the deeper, low-frequency sounds that can be heard many miles away. These are some of the loudest sounds made by any animal. It's still a mystery why the humpback sings. Possibly to attract females who are here to breed, or as a display for competing males. One thing is certain, the whales are communicating with each other. The whales have another method of communicating, lobtailing. Unlike singing, they do this all year round. Any time, any place. That's not the only way they make a splash. They also use their flippers. When ancient mariners first saw humpbacks frolic like this, they were so impressed they gave them a special name, the merry whale. No other species of whale is as active as this. The sound from all this slapping will travel far, communicating the whale's position to others.
However, this is also a good way to shed dead skin as well as bothersome parasites. Petty Point's first few months are not just about play. He has to feed, too. And this he does frequently. He's growing fast, putting on 60 kilos a day. His mother's milk has more fat and protein than any land mammal and is very concentrated. It's as thick as heavy cream. Petit Point can curl his tongue into a funnel to ensure that none of the rich milk escapes into the sea. He doesn't need to suck his mother pumps the milk into his mouth. He can even fill up while traveling. Eventually, he has to breathe. is so full, the milk is escaping. The little whale is full and satisfied. When Petty Point travels to the feeding grounds, he will learn a new special way of feeding, unique to humpback whales, bubble fishing. Bubbles on the water surface were released by this whale to surround and confuse a shoal of fish. The fish react to the bubbles and the piercing humpback call by grouping closer together for protection. And then the whale takes its reward. The birds are after any tidbit they can grab, but the vast humpback mouth lets little get away. The open mouth can take in a huge amount of water, as much as 2,000 litres. And then it's all strained through the long plates of baleen hanging down from the roof of the mouth. A strong muscular tongue then squeezes out the water, leaving the fish trapped in the baleen. A humpback can consume as much as 4,000 kilos of fish in a single day. Humpback whales normally forage by themselves, spreading out over the feeding grounds. But when there's a very large shoal of fish, then as many as 20 whales may feed together. The whales can cooperate to catch their prey. Humpbacks are amazing hunters, able to overwhelm their prey with ingenious behavior and an enormous mouth. But humpbacks themselves were once the target of hunting. They have a curious nature and often approach vessels. For hundreds of years, they swam straight into the harpoons of whalers. Whaling decimated their population worldwide, killing 250,000 humpbacks in the last century.
When they were finally protected, only 5,000 remained. Until now, the ban is held firm. But every year, hundreds of minke whales are still being killed under the guise of science. And those same whalers now want to resume the hunt for humpback whales. But for now, they're only pursued by scientists whose tiny darts are safe and don't cause injuries. Only a little sting. This is true science, where all that's taken is a tiny tissue sample. There's no need to kill the whale to understand it. From this, scientists can gain a wealth of information about a living whale. We're only beginning to learn the secrets of these amazing animals. For now, Petty Point is safe from the killing ships. And so is his mother. Today, the humpback is still endangered. It will be a long time before their population ever returns to what it once was. During this winter season, the ghoul will spend six months without feeding. But she will still produce 50,000 liters of milk for her offspring. Her hungry calf will drain away a quarter of her entire body weight, about 12,000 kilos. No wonder he's so playful. Until he leaves this place, Petit Point needs to gain strength. He must practice how to move his giant body. The ghoul will need to conserve her energy not just to feed Petit Point, but to power her swim south when this winter season ends. With mother's protection, a baby humpback has a carefree life. But it's not without its dangers. Petit Point already bears the scars of a shark attack, a cookie cutter shark which bit off round pieces of his blubber. Staying close to mom is the secret of survival. The biggest danger for a young whale is when it becomes separated from its mother. There are predators in every ocean who target baby humpbacks, especially when they're on their own. There are killer whales in colder waters, and in the tropics, tiger sharks. Most attacks occur during the baby whale's first migration, when it's small. Predators can see which ones are vulnerable. Like this baby with a diseased tail. It's losing the tissue of its flukes, making swimming more difficult. There's no way it could outswim a tiger shark. This killer is one of the largest of all sharks, and fierce. Its 
found a baby humpback on its own. The whale is badly wounded. It tries to ward off the attack. The shark wastes no time in moving in for the kill. The blood attracts more sharks. It's over quickly. But the loss is immense. It will take two years for the whale's mother to conceive and give birth to another baby. Petty Point will need to stay alert to the dangers of the sea. One mistake could cost him his life. Fortunately, Virgul is always close by to keep him safe. Virgul's role is more than just mother and protector. She will also act as teacher to her young calf. Most importantly, she will lead him on his first great migration to the feeding grounds in Antarctica. This is the same journey that her mother took her on and her mother before her. Humpbacks have been swimming our seas for seven million years. Female humpbacks are the most important members of their population. They raise the young, they protect them, and they show them the migration route that each whale will repeat for the next 40 or 50 years. They are the wise ones who retain the cultural memory of their population. Without their mothers to guide them, baby humpbacks would be lost at sea. It's early September. The end of the Antarctic winter season is now only two months away, and then all humpbacks will leave their warm tropical waters and travel to colder, richer ones where they can finally feed. When they depart, Virgul will show Petty Point her migration route. In his first journey, he will need to remember the entire route. The journeys of humpback whales are far, 
some as long as 10,000 miles to the poles, amongst the longest journeys of any mammal on Earth. They rarely rest. They keep moving, drawn on by a growing hunger. Somehow, they find a way to navigate the endless sea. Sometimes, whales use their own sonar, making sounds which can travel many miles, bouncing back from underwater mountains. Whales can use a sea mountain as a navigational aid, aiming their sound signals towards it and swimming in that direction. Once reaching it, they then change course and head to a new feature. The whale's urgency to reach the feeding grounds is strong. They rarely stop. Even at night, they continue. Whales also use sound to communicate with one another. Their companions may be dozens of miles away, but they can still be in close contact. They perceive their world on a much larger scale than humans. Who needs the stars when it's possible to navigate with sound? The journey can be too much for some calves, but riding the slipstream of their mother is less work and makes the journey easier. When Petty Point completes his first voyage, he will arrive in the freezing seas of Antarctica. Here, there's plenty of food for a growing whale. and he will learn how to hunt for himself. His first few years will be a crucial learning period. Every year, humpbacks return to the same place their mothers first showed them. This is home. Because of this, most of the whales at a feeding site are related. They're an extended family, who return every year from different wintering sites to feed. This might explain why they cooperate so well. There's no doubt they can learn from each other, especially when they're after fish. In 1980, researchers studying humpbacks off the coast of New England noticed that one whale began using a different feeding technique. Before blowing a bubble net, the whale did something new. It slapped its tail on the water, which killed or stunned its prey. Then it blew a bubble net and proceeded to feed. This behavior, called lobtail feeding, had never been seen before. Soon, other whales began lobtailing too. The practice spread throughout the population, especially among younger whales who picked it up in their crucial first few years. By 1989, half the whales were lobtail feeding. Today, it's a common behavior. Lobtail feeding is evidence of culture, an exchange of information from one whale to another. There's a good reason why the whales began lobtailing. Before 1980, they fed on fast-swimming herring, but with the collapse of the herring stocks from overfishing by man, 
they turned to slower, less agile sand lances. They needed a new technique to catch these prey, so they invented one. This is one hopeful reason why humpbacks may thrive in the future. Their culture helps them survive in a changing world. Human fisheries are doing more harm to humpbacks than depleting their food supply. The adult humpback's number one cause of death is entanglement in fishing gear. Nets and ropes which take years to degrade. They wrap around the whale's mouth, flippers and tail and stop it from swimming and feeding. They also kill. Two-thirds of right whales and humpbacks in the North Atlantic bear the scar marks of fishing gear entanglement. It's too late for this whale. Its mouth is entangled in rope. The rope has ripped apart the baleen, which is now sticking out from the whale's mouth. Now it can't feed. It's certain death. In a few places, highly specialized whale rescuers are risking their lives to save entangled whales. They first need to hook the netting that snared the whale. Just let her go, let her go. Call up on it, snub it, snub it, so we got it in. Okay, good, now let her go, let her go, let her go. See what happens. Then they follow the whale until it slows down and cut the rope. The whale had rope embedded six inches deep into its tail. Okay, one more. Wait a minute, it's flying, it's flying. We got it, look at that. No wonder it's relieved. This is an ever-present danger that Petty Point will face. For now, he's safe in his sanctuary and free to play. Until he leaves on his great voyage, he will gain strength and learn how to move his huge body. Humpback whales have the largest flippers of any whale, a third of their body length. They use them like rudders to turn and roll with incredible skill and precision, just what a hungry whale needs when it's chasing fish. But this isn't just play. It's practice for when Petty Point separates from his mother after just one year and heads off on his own. Play is preparation for more adult games. As he matures, Petty Point will memorize the song that he hears from other whales. One day, this mysterious and compelling song will reverberate from him. He will become the newest member of the great underwater choir and fill the ocean with his own voice. He will keep alive the ancient song of the humpback.
The humpback song is a powerful form of communication. But exactly what the sounds mean is still anybody's guess. All the whales in each ocean sing the same song. However, over time, the song changes. New phrases are introduced, others are dropped. Within a few years, the song is completely different. And somehow, all the whales keep up with the changes. The whales in different oceans have different songs. The song that Petty Point hears in the South Pacific is wondrous. The song of other whales in the North Pacific is completely different. <coughs> Whatever it may mean, the humpback song is a remarkable evolving symphony of nature. For most of the past few months, the ghoul has raised Petty Point in a safe, remote corner away from all the other whales. But now, a visitor has appeared, a young adult male humpback. Petty Point has a rival for his mother's attention. Humpback whales also come to the tropics to mate. Females, like Vagul, don't normally conceive the same season they give birth. But that still doesn't stop the young male showing interest. He wouldn't stand a chance competing against larger males for a receptive female, so he's turned his attention to Vagul, who has no other suitors. Wherever they go, the escort will follow. Male humpbacks will compete fiercely to mate. As many as 20 males will follow one female, jostling for pole position beside her. A receptive female attracts the very largest suitors. The closest escort has the best chance of mating. But he must defend his position. The once peaceful singers will have violent battles for supremacy. This is the final lesson Petty Point will need to learn if he is to father his own young. He will have to become a fighter. Only size will give him the strength to push rivals away. His first opportunity to mate may not happen for another 12 years, when he's fully grown and experienced. 
The battles between the male shooters can last for hours. These are immense tests of strength. They will ram into one another. blast out huge amounts of air. With the female in front of him and his rivals behind, the principal escort has one final strategy. He blows a huge curtain of bubbles, stretching a hundred meters long to screen off the female and intimidate other males. Each lung is the size of a car. He has plenty of air to release. The males may battle all day, but in the end, it's the female who makes the choice who to mate with. It's now November, the end of the winter season. Vagul has seen her baby through his first four months. By now, Petty Point has grown a thick layer of blubber to help him cope with the colder polar waters. He is now ready for his first great journey, a voyage to Antarctica. This will be a coming of age for this remarkable animal. Mothers with calves are the last to leave the tropical waters. This will be the most dangerous journey of Petit Point's life. If he makes it, then he stands a good chance of growing into a 40,000 kilo giant. His heart alone will weigh 220 kilos, equal to three men. Giant whales are celebrated for being the largest animals ever to live on Earth. Today, the few remaining humpbacks are protected, but their future is far from secure, especially those that live here in French Polynesia and feed in the Antarctic. The whalers consider this wonder of nature as just another food stock. Petty Point has done well in his first few months. He is now ready to become a great voyager, to join the other humpbacks and travel the ocean on their ancient migration. For now, his bond with his mother is still strong, and he has much more to learn from her. He has much to see and will face many challenges in his long life. And he will carry on the culture of the humpbacks. Petty Point was born.